All Things Techie Podcast is a product of the Extreme Media Network. For advertising and sponsorship opportunities, please visit www.extrememedia.ie. That's X T R E M E media.ie. Audio visual from an Irish perspective. This is the All Things Techie Podcast. Hello everyone, it's episode 38 of the All Things Techie Podcast. I'm Justin Dawson. It's sort of a Halloween November, the start of November podcast for episode 38. And as always, if you'd like to get in contact with us, the details is popping up on your screen at this very moment in time. What have we got in store for you for this episode. Well, we're going to talk about Halloween and projection mapping and uh, Fingal County Council have teamed up with the Lusk Community Council. This is my local neighbourhood here in North County Dublin. And on the eve of Halloween, I decided to take a trip out to our local round tower which is doing some projection mapping. Have a look at this. I'm in my car because I've just driven down locally in my local area of Lusk, North County, Dublin, where there is some projection mapping going on as well for Halloween. Stage five lockdown in Ireland. So that means that there isn't going to be door to door Halloween. So our local county councils are trying to do the best that they can and it's great to see sort of like the hashtag we make events where local av companies they are um they are getting out and they are projection mapping on the side of an old church that's in lusk um, a small village in north county dublin and i'm gonna take a walk and uh, show you what it's all about so um this is what i call my tim albright look and uh, I can even do it better, the, the Tim Albright look um, of I'm going to rob someone's house. Tim, I love you really, I really do. Um, so yeah, it is quite cold tonight. Uh, I can pull that down because I'm on my own and there's no one around to actually social distance from. Uh, a lot of people maintaining the stage five local lockdown at the moment, uh, viewers. It is dark at the moment, uh, but our little village of Luss, North County, Dublin, has spider webs going on up and down um, an old round tower. Spiders' webs and stars and ghosts and ghoulies. Um, probably done with our local county council called Fingal County Council here in North County, Dublin. I'm going to walk up and see. What team is actually involved in doing this projection mapping? I'm sure that it's going on for about three hours each night. Some people walking up to have a look. I'm sure uh, on Halloween night this is going to be a lot busier. But uh, pretty cool. Hopefully they do this for Christmas as well, especially if we're in stage five lockdown for Christmas. Probably in stage three um, and not be able to go anywhere. Really spooky that I'm actually walking into a graveyard at eight o'clock at night in pitch black. There is... The Round Tower of Lusk. It looks actually very Christmassy, I have to admit, with the red. Let me stand near the light so people can see me. There's actually two more laser projectors on the rear side of the Round Tower and uh, doing the opposite side as well so there's four I'm still trying to see if there's any av company that i can talk to to see who actually is running the show here and that's the rear uh, side of the round tower and church as well here in Lus. okay so unfortunately there is no av team on site for this actual projection but uh, I have found out that with the little video that I did there that uh, it is being controlled inside and um, there is wires going inside the ch- old church building so I'm guessing there is some computers and laptops set up inside uh, running off four projectors laser projectors that's going around the round tower at, and as I walk away from the light you're not going to be able to see me so uh, yeah so four four laser projectors Two on the front, two on the rear, uh, doing the projection mapping. 
I have to say, really cool. As part of Fingal County Council and Lust Village and the Round Tower and Lust for Halloween, which is... Okay, okay it's starting to rain, guys, but here I am in Rust, County Dublin, and uh, that's the the library, the old library in Rush, or the old church in Rush, that is now the, national, the local library in Rush, and that's their projection uh, on a flat surface. It's also taking place on um, Braemore Castle, have a slightly different uh, look, but also available in on Rush Library. And where's the third place? Oh, Newbridge House. Newbridge House have the exact same uh, projection as the Round Tower in Lust. I think Braemore Castle in um, in North County Dublin must have a different team because this is the image of what's being displayed there. Now, and of course, last year, this is what I did last year, um, uh, a little video of how to do some cool projections um, on the front of your house. I use my front window rear projected, and this is my little how-to video from last year. Okay, so on the windows, there's laminate. This is reusable. Um, a couple of different AV pros have said different things of what you can use, including Glade. Um, I think you can buy it over in the States that can be put on the windows. This stuff is from Atmos FX. Um, I'll give the link in the description below. And this is reusable stuff. It's like a film. Uh, you just stick it to the windows and it has a bit of a shine too. Problems that I had with it, very bubbly as you can see, but uh, at night, doesn't make a difference. It shines through. Uh, good projector. As you can see, PC, or I know it's an old PC, but uh, yeah, it does the job. It has HDMI input, uh, or sorry, output rather, uh, from the PC. A good projector. Yes, a good projector. Because um, HDMI by BenQ, no way. Uh, no uh, endorsements to BenQ or anything, and a HDMI input as well. Um, of course, I can take the audio out from here, or I can also uh, take the audio out from the PC, which I have been doing. And the most important thing when you set this thing up is that I have rear, uh, since there's a rear projection, I have switched or mirrored the actual image um, on the window so it looks the right way extension lead because my house just does not have enough plug sockets and a cable so let's go and set this baby up. proper dark outside this was like two weeks ago when i first set it up um, and it's proper dark outside so now you can see just how dark the actual windows are going to be okay so like the filament outside and what I've done also uh, on the bottom is I have actually blacked out the windows, just a piece of paper, right? So let's let's go set it up. Guys, welcome back inside. So uh, what have we got going on? Right, so I pulled down the blind uh, on my window. So at the moment, you can see everything that's going to be projected. So uh, now don't forget, there's a lot of ambient light, so you can see me at the moment. But if I turn off all the lights, you're only going to see this person popping out of the screen so that's that's a black blind with the BenQ projector going on and as you can see everything's flipped um, on the projection simply because when you're outside you'll see it the right way around and there's the werewolf haven't got sound on at the moment simply because I don't want to wreck the surprise for all the kids on the street um, on what's going to be playing on the night but like there's music that goes along with this I'm going to be setting up a Bluetooth speaker with it so if I can just show you where I have uh, measured out using the discus model and uh, I'm going to be taking down the curtains of course on the night too um, and then the HDMI in the laptop down here and uh, my power lead down there somewhere as well so let's go back, back outside, outside and, uh, here we have it, the actual Halloween showcase for the night. It's going to be this playing in the background on my house. This podcast is a very much a view us on YouTube podcast uh, to see what I did with the how-to videos. But uh, if you're listening in, you can also visit us on our YouTube channel. 
uh, all things techie. Now, <laughs> very weird Halloween this year. I did the projection mapping again this year and um, mentioned uh, Trick or Treat for Temple Street. That's our local hospital here in North County Dublin and Children's Hospital, who, like all major charities here in Ireland, they are down on funding and Temple Street do fantastic work. I'm going to just throw up the link here to templestreet.ie um, for any of our listeners or subscribers that would like to donate to a children's hospital here in Ireland, please do so. Yeah, very weird Halloween, like everyone's been telling us to stay indoors and you know what, like usually around our housing state here in North County Dublin, we in Lusk, we would have an influx of children coming to our door, ringing the doorbell and trick-or-treating for nearly two hours. This year, it was all over in 20 minutes. Like There wasn't any ding-dong of the doorbells. Uh, some people left out sweets and, and bowls of sweets at the top of their garden, at, at the gate, and were handing out sweets to to kids kids still dressed up and plenty of fireworks going off last night it sounded like i don't know world war three was going on but no trick-or-treating like the usual trick-or-treating that would go on because we're in stage five lockdown and i see england has just gone into stage five lockdown as well which begs the question of like where does this leave us in the new year in 2021 everyone's hoping that we'll come out in December, we can celebrate Christmas in a somewhat normality. But until a vaccine is found, we're going to have this problem of events being cancelled and postponed and rearranged. But November brings some brilliant um, virtual events. The LTSMG conference. Have a look at this. <laughs> Yeah, LTSMG at home um, and looking forward to Aaron and Adam did some terrific jobs uh, doing up some videos and all the sponsor videos. Really looking forward to the schedule um, in the middle of November. Um, of course, there's loads of Avixa um, level up events going on. And what else is coming up in Oh, yeah, the AV Awards is happening in, in November as well. And uh, virtual roundtables. We were having a joke about this um, on the AV Happy Hour of like, oh, shall we all just dress up in costumes, like Halloween costumes for the AV Awards? And it was getting some some um, interest. You know, I just stuck that out there. But uh, usually a black tie affair and in, in London and, you know, not not happening the way it, it will be because everything's in lockdown again in England and they pulled the plug on doing a physical event uh, this year. But interesting to see and, and best wishes to Joe Way. I'm going to do a big shout out to Joe Way. Hope you win uh, some awards there, Joe, and I, I'll be rooting for you on the night. Now, now, listeners, do you want to get your hands on one of these? It's the All Things Techie podcast stickers, free swag. Do you want to get your hands on one of these? All you have to do is like, comment and share and then direct message us and we'll send you out some of these stickers that you can put on your laptops and uh, well, wherever you want to put it really. You know, the All Teens Techie podcast sticker only available at allteenstech.ie or to us. Moving on, Google is to test smart displays that activate without a wake word. A new feature being inter internally tested by Google could remove the need to say, hey Google, before voicing commands to Nest Hub smart displays. Instead, the feature codenamed Blue Steel could allow the device to simply sense your presence and proactively listen for commands without needing to hear the wake word. This I can't see catching on. Um, very scary. Um, privacy issues galore. And have a look at, at this little video. The functionality has been shown off in a video posted on YouTube by Jan Burmas. And the video Burmas can be seen uh, asking for a variety of information, all without the uttering the words, hey Google. 
The Nest Hub Max Smart Displays is reporting running a leaked internal firmware meant for testing within Google, and it's unclear if the company has any plans to release the functionality publicly. I can't see this being released, especially in Europe um, with data protection laws. I just cannot see GDPR allowing something like this to be released. The speculation is that the Nest Hub Max is using its existing ultrasound sensing to sense a person's presence and start listening. And already, like, there's been times where myself and my wife have been like talking away with a personal conversation in the kitchen and all of a sudden Google starts talking to us and we haven't uttered the words at all about hey Google and at times we even mention Alexa and it does weird things and we don't even have an Alexa in the house and uh, so what do you think about this listeners do you, do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea it, imagine if it does do facial recognition you're sitting in a car you have your mobile phone or cell phone in your cradle and your car and is sensing you and instead of having to say hey google it knows that you're driving along and you want to make a call and you just say hey call whoever is that a good thing or does this raise privacy concerns as well if released to the public blue steel could raise a lot of privacy concerns a key element of the current smart speakers and displays is that they only pay attention to what you're saying after you hear the wake sound or the wake word relying on Upon proximity detection alone increases the risk of devices hearing something they're not supposed to at the expense of your privacy. That said, Blue Steel could make a useful optional feature for some having to repeatedly say, hey, Google. But you know what? Saying, hey, Google, there's supposed to be the, the process of if you put in the word and, it knows that you're continuing the sentence. I can never get that to work. You know, I... I would come home and say, hey, Google, turn on the radio, play my favorite radio station and turn on the lights. And it doesn't understand the doing the two commands at the same time. Google is also just continuing its Google Nest secure alarm system, but warns it's not backing out of home security. I, you know, I've seen the Nest secure alarm system and I, I noticed also that Google has done a lot of changes to apps and the look of their apps and the logos. There's been a lot of controversy about the changes of the logos. Why not just leave it the way it is? But it seems that more and more, if you buy a Google product, they could easily discontinue it. And you just think, what is the backup? Like I, I still use the Google doorbell and um, the hello and now it's known as the Nest Hello, and I was supposed to change over the app, but it still works on my old platform because I have a domain linked with my Google domain. And it's just, it's just like the Google Home. I can't get my calendar to work because I'm using what they consider a business account. And this is my biggest gripe, and I've been talking about this, I think, since episode one of this podcast. And when slowly approaching episode 40 of the podcast, I'm going to be doing a lot of changes and testing out some new ideas um, with the All Things Techie podcast. And I would like your opinions on the new ideas that are coming along the line between November and December and into the new year in 2021. So stay tuned for that. Um, Google Nest will no longer be producing Next Secure. However, we will continue to support our security users in the same ways a Google spokesperson said in the statement to The Verge um, online magazine. Google introduced Google Nest Secure System in 2017. It was designed to be a modular relying on the small hockey puck shaped device with a keypad called the Nest Guard as the central hub. Sensors around the house called Nest to test and the NFC key fobs to arm and disarm the system. It also connects to the Nest mobile app so you can get alerts and arm and disarm the system remotely. And um, well, I have reviewed the home secure um, device uh, that's done by Chubb, I believe, and uh, here in Ireland. And a similar platform works really well, but it, it calls a call monitoring system and we pay a monthly subscription to that but you know what it's worth it i always think it's worth it um 
and Google says they're not going out of home security, but you wonder why they're pulling the plug on the Nest Secure system. You really do. Coming up in the All Things Techie podcast after this, we're going to be talking about COVID-19. Will it bring a growth in v- it's the All Things Techie podcast? Will COVID-19 bring a growth in virtual reality? Well, here's an interesting thing. For many people, a trip to Germany, fairy tale uh, castle, the Republic of Ireland stood in clips of mower. You know, do you know what's actually quite sad? Of all the time I've been in Ireland and, you know, I took a road trip uh, with my wife for a couple of days to Cork and we're doing the Wild Atlantic Way. We haven't got up as far as the cliffs of Moher. And in my 37 years in Ireland, um, yeah, I'm t- telling you my age, I haven't actually visited the cliffs of Moher. Poor me. I should actually visit them as soon as the lockdowns and the restrictions I lifted a bit, you know, uh, in the new year, I might actually visit the Cliffs of Moher. But where am I going with this? It's an interesting, it's a, a tourist attraction, the Cliffs of Moher and the Maldives. Oh, I'd love to go to the Maldives. But without the ways and means of travel, people are asking, can we visit these places in virtual reality? And it, not just tourists and tourism. Is virtual reality going to have a growth during this COVID-19 pandemic, whether it be teaching and education or, or you know, tourism um, or being able to talk to people in a, a virtual environment using, instead of using a webcam and a microphone, you know, being able to stick on a headset and sit beside them. Is this the new future or is it still a pipe dream? For many people, uh, plans for these and other international trips in 2020 were brought to a broad halt by the COVID-19 pandemic. Around the world, once crowded sites lay dormant with hotels empty and not a tourist in sight. The statistics speak for themselves. On October the 13th, the International Air Transport Association said that international travel has all but disappeared, with airlines carrying about 10% of normal levels. Well, now there is companies that are actually making virtual reality um, 360 views of lights, the Cliffs of Moher, the Maldives, and and so forth. But you know what? I can't see it catching on. I can't see people wanting to buy a headset to explore um, these different places. Google Street View. Now I understand that people can go onto the computer and do, do a 360. I've done it when I like, looking at different places that I was going to, before visiting, um, you know, Switzerland or getting directions of like, well, okay, when, when I get off a train, I, I, I've done it actually even for going to ISE or the first year trying to find out where my hotel was in relation to the Rye. And yeah, I see a purpose in that, but I can't see how this whole idea of wearing a goggles and touring around the cliffs of Moher, wearing a virtual headset and not pulling off the cliff virtually. Hmm. Do you see it catching on, listeners? Let us know. This is all that we have time for in episode 38 of the All Things Techie podcast. We promise you some really interesting things talking about the AV Awards, the LTSMG uh, at home and much more as we go through the month of November. Stay safe. Um, If you're in lockdown and the highest levels of lockdown, stay safe. Don't forget to talk to people online. Join some AV happy hours. Ask some tech questions. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.